have growth before stabilization. Is a stabilization or growth always a recurring thing? And stabilization is a bit of a myth that we really, what is stabilization? Um, if you are growing, you always have this dynamism in life. What is appropriate growth and um, how does that come about? We endeavor to use Zambia as a model of not only stabilization, but inclusive growth. And we are excited to have you all, but to contribute to the, the theme that we have today. Welcome and feel free to participate. And now, of course, we're talking about stabilization, knowing that there is the debt treatment by the IMS, uh, which is supposed to um, underpin the stabilization program for, for Zambia. And I think more importantly, coming from where we're coming in terms of ECA, uh, there are issues of inclusive growth. Zambia has been able uh, to grow in certain periods, but that hasn't carried everybody else. And I think that is the focus. To date, you will note that Zambia has 61% of its population classified as poor. Uh, and this is really people living um, under extreme poverty. Uh, and uh, this is according to the target that we have, the international poverty line of $2.15 a day. So Zambia faces very acute economic and social challenges. And this complements some of the slides that you just saw from Eunice, where she was looking at, uh, looking at these trends over time. So in the first chart, you can see that average growth in Zambia in the last 10 years has been quite a bit weaker than in the previous decade. That's a black dashed line that you can see there. Now this was because the economy was hit by a succession of shocks. There was a drop of cop in copper prices in 2015, 2016. There were droughts most recently in 2019, which impacts the agricultural sector, which we saw is where most people work. What are some of the challenges that is stopping Zambia from creating an industrial base? Uh, what we've been lacking in Zambia for a very long time, uh, you know, the stories of having uh, a lot of minerals being discovered, a lot of opportunities of setting up industries, in almost every province, in almost every district, there was some industry of some sort. And then uh, at some point, we just don't know where those industries actually uh, went to. So even when we are talking about bringing them back, we would simply be retelling an old story. And so maybe what we actually need to think of now is uh, what sort of new things are we actually uh, going to bring so that uh, what may not have worked that time should be able to work this time around. Most of the people that are mostly active in terms of the economic growth, those are the private sectors or other foreign versus industries. And as organizations, what's your say on that? Like The issue of uh, growth and inequality is quite an odd, odd problem. Uh, there was a time when development economists actually, or, and development theory, argued that all you needed was growth in the economy and uh, everything else would be taken care of. Uh, but over time, uh, we know that that doesn't hold. You've come to say carbon markets can help Zambia watches make profit. So why hasn't the government looked into this watches um, carbon market to gain more profit? Zambia depends on the IMF's voice to take them on this road to inclusive uh, growth. What is the IMF's uh, position uh, in tackling the misconception among Zambians who think things are actually worse than they were uh, before the deal was actually implemented? Apart from the GDP per capita income, what other indicators has the IMF put in place? to measure poverty in terms of, and as an individual, or you're measuring poverty for a certain economy. How are UNECA helping in terms of um, making sure that we have a better actualiz actualization? Of course, yes. The potential for SEZs to work in Zambia, as in anywhere else, is there. But it's what, what model would be replicated, but using the uniqueness that each country has to drive that policy. All the talking we can do, all the advice we can do, 
all the uh, guidelines, all the policies, the programs we can make. If we, as a country, are not implementing that as governors, then we can be talking until um, duck uh, touches the dust. So it's very important that IMF can advise, UNECA can advise, techno of uh, tech, uh, uh, technocrats can advise. But I, I think at the end of it all, as a government, we must be what we call in the driver's seat. <laughs>